June 9th at 10 a.m. Pacific. That's U.S. West. Bungie will be premiering, revealing their next big Destiny thing, content update, expansion, whatever you want to call it. Probably this fall 2016 expansion rumored to be the Rise of Iron. That does leave one big question. What are they going to do at E3, if anything? I don't know. So we're just going to have to wait and see. Twitch.tv slash Bungie is the place where you're going to want to be next week to catch everything. And I, of course, will be making a video to cover it. Now, Zer. Hello, everyone. It is Zer time, as is every Friday. Hello, everybody. Week number 91, he is speaker adjacent, or near, near the speaker, you know, by the railing, I came as is tradition. Guardian. Starting from the bottom, we have Emerald Quail and Void Drive for those rare blue quality sparrows. Three heavy ammo packs for one strange coin, five three of coins for seven strange coins, three glass needles for a whole bunch of stuff and one mode of light for two strange coins. Now before we begin, none of the items here are high rolls for those looking for tier 12 stat builds. Titans, you are getting the ACD0 Feedback Fence. I think this is the first time that they've been sold since they were released, if I remember correctly. I think they were only sold once before ever. We have side bonuses of increased melee attack speed, gain bonus melee energy on grenade hits, and we also have hand cannon and sidearm reloader. The main bonus, it makes it so, if you're hit by a melee attack, that melee will trigger an AoE coming from you. For PvE, this is basically a non-factor. It might be a fun thing to use as a gimmick, but for anything serious, you're not gonna use this. It doesn't trigger often enough, and it does pretty low damage. In PvP, this can actually be kind of funny to use because I think, I think that a fully charged striker or sunbreaker melee attack and this proccing will kill someone. So if the enemy happens to be right on top of you, you can maybe kill them. Maybe. Is it something I'm going to use over armamentarium or garrison? No. But it does have the capability of maybe killing someone. Yeah, I think I'm overselling these. You're probably not going to use them, let's be honest. Hunters. You're getting the Graviton Forfeit. We have side bonuses of Hands-On and Heavy Lifting for bonus super energy and Innervation. The main bonus gives you Shade Step for free, provided you are using Night Stalker. This is a do-a-thing exotic. It gives you an ability that has variable value. There is not a value I can place on this ability. It all depends on whether or not you are good with Shade Step. If you are, then this is a great PvP helm for you to wear. But if you aren't, or prefer having something like Double Smoke Bomb, or don't play Night Stalker, then this is going to be of no use to you. I will say that you really don't need this thing in PvE at all. Yeah, it's helpful for, you know, dodging Golgoroth, Ogre, Venom, whatever, but... You can just shoot it instead. You don't really need this. Warlocks. You're getting Alchemist's Raiment. We have side bonuses of Carry More Special or Heavy Ammo. And we have Arc Burn Defense and Arc Armor. The main bonus gives you a chance to gain Glimmer on Primary Ammo Pickup. And while your super is full, you generate Grenade and Melee Energy when picking up Orbs of Light. Last time I checked, which was quite a while ago, the glimmer portion of this bonus was awful. I think it was eight glimmer for one ammo pack. I would think that the, the I would think that the majority of the population has zero glimmer issues at the moment, considering there's not much to buy. The second portion, the orb energy, I've never really been a huge fan of because I would rather my orbs go towards my super. You know, the most a powerful, the most a power. The most powerful ability that you have. Now, if you're a Fireborn Sunsinger, then this might be a little more useful. But for everyone else, maybe not as much. Maybe it's good to charge up your Transcendence proc, I guess. The, the best part about these robes is probably the fact that you can hold more special or heavy ammo. And I think otherwise, they are pretty forgettable. They look cool, though. Plan C. 
is the weapon of the week, one of my favorite weapons in the game. There is nothing crazy about the Plan C in terms of its bonuses or its perks. It is simply a really, really, really good fusion rifle. The best of year one, and I'd say among the best in year two. It's quite versatile in how you can build it, and with fusion rifles getting buffed in the April update, it is more usable than ever. The main perk, that, makes it so that you can switch to it and instantly fire off a shot, melting someone in the process. Fusions take a little more skill to use than they used to, and certainly require more finesse than a shotgun or a sniper, but the Plan C tries to give you all the tools that you need to make kills happen. One of the best fusion rifles in the game, but not exactly the best first exotic if you're looking for your first exotic as a new player. The Legacy Engram is body armor. That's year one armor at year one defense levels. If you find body armor that is also in year two, it'll unlock in your year two blueprint vendor. That is going to do it for Xur week number 91. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, June 9th, 10 a.m. Pacific is the next big reveal for Destiny. I will be sure to cover anything and everything from the reveal and inform you guys as soon as I get that video done. Otherwise, sorry about all the Overwatch spam, but it's kind of flavor of the week right now, so I'm just trying to get out a whole bunch of stuff while the 17 of you are still interested in it. That's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you all next time. Weekly update that on June... Yeah? Yeah, Leopard? You gonna like my tweets? You gonna like my tweets? At 2.47, Leopard? In the morning?